What's up guys, we are back with another day of MLB action here on Friday, April 26th. Not exactly what we hoped for on Thursday's games. It was kind of a short slate. We tried to find some value, but we had a little bit of a hard time on our pinned comment picks. We did get Cleveland minus 115 right, but other than that, it was a tough, tough day. We had a weird one. We were on Toronto in that game. They lost two to one, but that was in a game that didn't even really go the distance, didn't finish the whole game due to weather. So that was unfortunate. We saw the Dodgers. They didn't get the job done for us. We had them minus one and a half. They won that game by only one run two to one kind of embarrassing that they can't find a way to score more than two runs against a team like the Nationals but what are you going to do and then the Yankees man they are just not themselves right now or something they just can't hit the ball can't get any runs across the plate they ended up straight up losing to the Oakland A's three to one so got that one wrong not our best day obviously coming back to earth a little bit after a four and one day uh the day before so what are you going to do? We're just going to get back after it, try and get back on the right track here. We have a full MLB slate to break down this one with 14 games to pick from, so let's jump right in. First, take a second and hit the like button to show some support for the channel and all the work we're putting in here every single day. If you're new, go ahead and subscribe. It's 100% free and can keep you from missing out on these picks. Our videos are sponsored by StumpTheSpread.com. Click the link in the description to go over there and join our free email list and check out our top confidence plays on all the major sports. Comment below with all the bets you're looking at today. We'll give you our best advice on all of them. We respond to absolutely every single comment, so let us know anything you want to say about my picks, these videos, or anything you see here. As always, our final picks will be in the pinned comment down below. Now let's get into our first game of the day, a day game between the Kansas City Royals and the Detroit Tigers. The Royals come into this game fresh off of a sweep against the Toronto Blue Jays. They have to feel pretty good about that one. That last game was obviously a weird one, but they won 2-1. to one. That goes on the record just like any other game, so they'll definitely take it. We saw a home run in that one from Salvador Perez, and the Royals 16-10 to start the season have to feel pretty good handing the ball here to Seth Lugo, who's off to a fantastic start. This big right-hander is 3-1 on the season with a 2.03 ERA. He's coming to this game fresh off of maybe his worst start of the season against the Orioles, where he gave up four earned runs over five and a third innings, only one walk and one strikeout while giving up two home runs. So by far his worst start of the season, we can definitely expect something of a bounce back from him here. I mean, he hasn't faced a lot of really, really tough teams, but do the Detroit Tigers really? qualify as a very, very tough team. Hard to tell right now, but just in general, the Royals had to be pumped about how things look at 16 and 10. They're in second place in the AL Central. They're only a couple of games back of the Cleveland Guardians, so things are just humming right along here for a team that didn't exactly come into this season with super high expectations. They're going up against the Tigers in this game, who come into this one fresh off of a loss to the Tampa Bay Rays, but they have won three of their last four. They won that series against the Rays 3-1, to one, so they have to feel pretty good about that. They're hitting the ball in this one to Reese Old Olsen, who comes in the season, he's 0-3 on the year, but he's got a 3.80 ERA, so not bad numbers at all. His last time out, he did give up four runs, but only two of them were earned. That was against the Minnesota Twins, so not exactly an elite team, not the kind of team you want to be giving up a bunch of runs to, but obviously not all of those were 100% his fault. He had two walks and four strikeouts. He's yet to give up a home run this season, so that's kind of interesting, and just in general this year, he's had a pretty good time. I mean, obviously, his starting against the Twins, his last time out wasn't great, and he did have a little bit of a hard time against the hot-hitting Pirates uh, very early this month, but he had a very solid start against the Texas Rangers. He opened a season with a very good start against the New York Mets, so the guy has had some positives this season just in general. He's not a huge guy. He's kind of a short right-hander, and he's a young guy, but we've kind of been happy with how he's looked out there on the mound. The Tigers in general have needed pretty good starting pitching here to get these wins, and at 14-11 and 11 on the season, they've been getting some wins. There's no way around it. They are 20th in the majors in terms of run scored 25th in the majors in terms of team batting average. Not a whole lot of guys off to great starts to them. I mean, Kerry Carpenter is their leading batting average guy, and he's only batting 289. So not a ton of positives. Not a lot of guys just hitting the cover off the ball here. I mean, they did score five runs in the last game of their series against the Rays, but they lost that game 7-5. to five. So I don't know. There's some reason for optimism. I suppose this offense might be getting a little bit better here, but they're going to have to get a lot better for this team to really thrive. Looking at the numbers for this game, we see the Royals are minus 102. The Tigers are minus 112. So pretty even there looking at the over under for this game we'd see it's at eight and a half we see both teams with under trends but not a massive under trend for the tigers the royals are one of the best under teams in the majors they're 17 8 and 1 to the under so we definitely have to give the under a little bit of a look here especially with seth lugo on the mound and the tigers offense not really looking elite this season i mean they are hitting the ball a little bit better recently but they also had a game where they only scored four runs uh they've had some struggles against the twins and i don't know guys it's tough to tell which way to go with this
this one. I think we lean towards the Kansas City Royals in this game a little bit. If you wanted to take a taste of the under, there's nothing wrong with that as well, but I think this game seems rather unlikely to end up being part of our pinned comment plays down below. Next up, guys, we've got the Oakland A's going on the road to take on the Baltimore Orioles. The A's coming to this game fresh off of that 3-1 win over the Yankees that really kind of screwed us over yesterday. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say about that one, guys. I mean, the A's played a great game, and the Yankees could only score one run. So what are you going to do there? Not a whole lot of ways around that one. The A's have not had a good season overall. They're only 10-16. They're going to be handing the ball in this one to Ross Stripling, who is off to an 0-5 start. This guy has started five games, and he's taken the loss in every single one of them. Not all of them have been terrible starts, though. He hasn't gotten very good run support, but his last time out against the Cleveland Guardians, he gave up three earned runs on five hits over five innings. Not really a bad start against a very, very good Guardians team. His start before that, he gave up three earned runs in five and two-thirds against the Cardinals. Start before that, he got torched by the Texas Rangers, so we don't have a ton of positive to say here about Stripling. He's not having a very good time right now, and neither are the Oakland Athletics bats. I mean, they did score three runs against the Yankees their last time out, and that almost qualifies as an offensive outburst for them. I mean, they've only scored 71 runs this season. That's good for 29th in the majors. They're also 29th in the majors in team batting average. On base percentage, they're 28th. There's just nobody on this roster that's really hitting the ball very well. I mean, we say Brent Rooker has hit five home runs, but the guy's only batting 176 on the season. Not a ton of positives here for the A's, and that's a little bit different than their opponent in this game, the Baltimore Orioles, who are 16-8 and on the season, come into this game fresh off of winning a series against the Angels. They have to be feeling pretty good about that. They also probably feel great about handing the ball to Corbin Burness in this game. He's fresh off of a very solid outing against the Kansas City Royals. I mean, maybe not super solid. Three runs on in five and two-thirds innings is not bad to me. He's had his uh, pretty much just positives this season in general we've seen the Orioles win every single game he started their 5-0 and in his starts this season so that's pretty wild stuff he has not looked as dominant as he did in his first start of the season where he struck out 11 against the Angels but two decent starts against the Kansas City Royals a decent start against the Milwaukee Brewers this guy has been looking very very good just in general and so has the Baltimore Orioles offense they are definitely trending in a positive direction they've scored six four and four runs over their last three games. They also scored five runs and nine runs in the last two games of their series against Kansas City Royals. So they are hitting the ball well, getting those runners around the bases. Things are just looking great. They're fourth in the majors in terms of runs scored with 136. Their team batting average is 260, which is good for fifth in the majors. Their team slugging percentage is second in the majors overall, guys. Their team slugging percentage is 459 pretty great numbers there. We see several of their guys off to very hot starts. Gunnar Henderson has eight home runs and is still batting over 300 on the season. So lots, lots, lots of positives here for the Baltimore Orioles. Looking at the numbers for this game, we see that the A's are huge underdogs. They're plus 225 in this game. The Orioles are massive favorites at minus 260. So that seems pretty expensive to me. I don't know if we're really going to be interested in that. The over-under in this game, you can find some eights out there or seven and a half, depending on what you're looking for. Neither one of these teams, well, the A's don't have any massive Massive leans, but Baltimore has been a huge over team this season. They're 15, 7, and 2 to the over. And against the Oakland A's and against Ross Stripling, I think they can maybe make it to the over just all on their own. I think this being such a low number is more an indictment of the A's offense in general. Looking at the run line for this game might be something we're a little bit interested in. We see that if you take the Orioles minus one and a half, you can get them at minus 120. I feel like we've been a little bit greedy here taking these run line plays, but guys, this looks like a very good run line spot to me. We're going to be on the Baltimore Orioles. Minus one and a half. I think this has a very solid chance of ending up as one of our pinned comment plays. Next up, guys, we got the LA Dodgers going on the road to take on the Toronto Blue Jays. The Dodgers come into this game fresh off the sweep over the Nationals, but that last game they could only win by a single run, so that was pretty unfortunate for us and one of our pinned comment plays, but what are you going to do? You definitely expect a team like the Dodgers to be able to score more than two runs against a team like the Nationals, but time for us to move on and time for the Dodgers to move on and take on the Toronto Blue Jays. The Dodgers are 16-11 and 11 to start the season. They're handing the ball in this game to Gavin Stone, who has gotten off to a kind of middling start. He's 1-1 one one on the season with a 6 ERA. His last time out he only lasted three and a third innings against the New York Mets. He gave up two earned runs on four hits, and he had five walks in that game. So major, major control issues for him in that one. He's had uh, some control issues this season. I mean, he has another game where he walked three batters. That was against the Chicago Cubs. So the guy can definitely struggle with his control a little bit. He did have a good outing against San Diego Padres, giving up only two earned runs over six and two-thirds. So that was a pretty solid one. But overall, we're not exactly going to look at this guy as a uh, an elite starting option right now. But you haven't really needed elite starting pitching in general for the Dodgers this season as they've been one of the best 
fast offensive teams in the majors. They scored 139 runs. That's second in the big leagues. Their team batting average is 268, which is second also. Team on base percentage is also second at 350. So just in general, things are looking fantastic. Mookie Betts is off to a crazy start. Everything is pretty much looking how you'd want it to if you're an LA Dodgers fan. And when you spend enough money on a roster, you can kind of expect things to pan out the way you want them to. They're going to need to continue to play well going up against the Toronto Blue Jays, although Toronto not having the best time. They just had to put one of their pitchers on the 15-day IL, and they just got almost swept in a four-game series by the Kansas City Royals. They did win game one of that series, but they lost the last three, and they've actually lost four of their last five overall. It seemed like this team was riding the ship, and now they're trending right back down. They're handing the ball in this game to Chris Bastet. He comes into this one two and three on the season with a 3.90 ERA, so not terrible numbers, that's for sure. His last outing against the Padres, he went five and a third. He gave up six hits, but only two earned runs, but he gave up four runs runs overall so not exactly an elite performance at the time the outing before that he did very well against the Yankees though giving up only a single earned run only a single run over six and a third innings on four hits so he looked a little bit better in that one but the Yankees haven't really been hitting the ball this season so I don't know how much we can really take away from that looking at the Blue Jays hitting just in general it's looked really really bad not going to sugarcoat it, guys. In their series against the Royals, they scored two, two, and one runs in the last three games of that series. Maybe that means they're due for some sort of offensive outburst, but it has not looked like it. I mean, they're 22nd in the majors, only 95 runs scored. They're in the bottom third in the majors in most of the major statistical categories, except for on-base percentage, where they're somehow 15th. Their on-base percentage is 317, so hopefully that's a positive sign for uh, how their offense is going to do here down the stretch, but just in general, not a ton to feel good about for them in this one. Looking at the numbers in this game, we see the Dodgers are pretty reasonable, minus 122. The Blue Jays are plus 118. I think the odds makers are assuming that they have some sort of uh, significant uh, pitching advantage in this game, but I don't know if I really feel like that. I mean, Bastid hasn't had a great time this season. I mean, he's looked fine, but nothing special. And Gavin Stone hasn't been terrible by any stretch of the imagination. He just doesn't go that deep into games. So I don't know, guys. If you ask me about this one, I'm definitely trending towards just taking the Dodgers minus 122. I like them a lot. The over-under for this game is at 9. That seems a little bit steep, especially for a Toronto team that's not very good at hitting the ball. So I think we're going to be on the Dodgers minus 122. I'm not sure this will be in the pinned comment, but I think it's got a decent chance. Moving right along here, guys, we're looking at the Chicago Cubs going on the road to take on the Boston Red Sox. We just saw the Cubs finish off a sweep of the Houston Astros. They won that last game 3-1, to one, so they have to feel pretty good about that. They're 16-9 and nine on the season, so they're basically tied from the Milwaukee Brewers atop the NL Central. And in this game, they're going to be handing the ball to Shota Imanaga, who has been absolutely lights out to start off his season. He's 3-0 and with a 0.84 ERA. The guy is just killing it. He's coming off of a kind of middle-of-the-road start for him against the Miami Marlins. He went six innings in that start, gave up two earned runs, three runs overall, but he had five strikeouts and zero walks. He's actually had zero walks in three out of his four starts this season, so the guy's control seems to be fantastic. Giving up a home run to the Marlins might be more of a symptom of just like not being uh, super locked in against such a terrible team, but in general, we definitely like what Monaga is doing out there on the mound. The Cubs offense is definitely rounding into form. They're looking very, very good here. They're fifth in the majors in terms of run scored. 8th in the majors in terms of team on base percentage and 5th in the majors in terms of slugging percentage. Their team batting average isn't exactly elite. We haven't seen anybody really get out of the gate just hitting the cover off the ball for them in terms of like on base percentage, but we do see Cody Bellinger. He's got 5 home runs and 17 RBIs. Michael Bush has 6 home runs. He's batting 266 on the season, so there's definitely some positives out there for the Cubs offense. They're hitting the ball and they are getting runners across the plate. They're hoping they can keep that up here going against the Red Sox who come into this game at 14 and 12 on the season after winning one game out of three against the Cleveland Guardians. Not exactly the result they were hoping for, but against the Guardians, a very, very good team. I don't think you're too disappointed to just salvage a single win out of the series. They're going to be handing the ball in this one to Cutter Crawford. He comes into this game. He's looked very good here in the early goings. He's 1-0 and with a .66 ERA, so kind of crazy numbers from him in this one. His last time out against the Pirates, he went set, six innings, gave up seven hits and only a single earned run, six strikeouts and three walks in that one. The outing before that, he shut down the Cleveland Guardians, giving up only two hits over five and two thirds and having six strikeouts and zero walks. So the guy has looked very good, even against elite offensive teams, which I think we can almost say that the Cubs are an elite offensive team at this point. The Red Sox hitters have been kind of uh, middle of the road this season. I mean, there's some good numbers out there for sure, like team slugging percentage is very good, team on base percentage, though. Yeah. So 
not so hot. 20th in the majors. Team batting average, very bad. 235, which has them 20th in the majors as well. They're 13th in the majors in terms of runs scored. They don't really have anybody off to a great start anymore. I mean, Tyler O'Neill has missed a bunch of time, and since coming back from his like whole concussion thing, how good has he actually been? I mean, over the last seven days, he's only batting 222. His last time out again, like against the Guardians, he only had three hits in that entire series. In his two games against the Guardians in the last series, he only had two hits. So two for nine, not exactly tearing it up. I'm not going to be too shocked if he has a little bit of a process here getting back into the swing of things. Looking at the numbers for this game, we see that the Cubs are minus 105. The Red Sox are minus 102. I think that's mostly or completely on the strength here of Cutter Crawford's very, very solid start. Looking at the over-under in this game, we see that it's at eight. This game's happening at Wrigley Field, guys. So I don't know about how that really will affect the over-under, kind of depending on weather, but I definitely like the under in this game. We see both teams with trends towards the under, which is a little bit surprising considering they both have hit the ball kind of okay this season. The Cubs are 14-11 and 11 to the under. We see Boston is 13-11-2 and 2 to the under, and neither one of these teams is coming off games where they like really hit the cover off the ball. I mean, we saw the Red Sox score four runs in their last game, and we saw the Cubs score three runs in their last game. So give me a taste of the under in this one for sure. I'm not sure if it'll be a pinned comment play, but both of these starting pitchers are elite. So definitely makes me shade towards the under eight in this one. Next up, guys, we're looking at the St. Louis Cardinals going on the road to take on the New York Mets. The Cardinals come into this game. They are 11 and 14 on the season. They did win two out of three against the Arizona Diamondbacks. So that's pretty solid and also pretty shocking. They're going to be handing the ball in this one to Miles Michaelis. He comes into this game, not the start to the season he hoped for. He's one and three on the year with a six 0.49 ERA. His last time out, he got absolutely shelled by the Milwaukee Brewers, which is a big problem. That's a team that the Cardinals are going to need to do really well against this season. He gave up nine hits and four and two thirds innings, five earned runs. He had three home runs in that game, guys. Just not a good outing in general, and he's been struggling this year overall. He he had two decent starts. He's had two good starts this whole season, but he gave up six and seven hits in each of them. He gave up two earned runs in each of those starts, and they were against the Phillies and the San Diego Padres. So other than that, he's given up at least five earned runs in each of his other starts. So things not exactly looking fantastic here for Michaelis, but pitching has not been the biggest problem for the Cardinals. The problem has been their absolutely dead bats. They did score five runs in their games against the, in their each one of their wins against the Diamondbacks. But other than that, not a lot of positives to report here. The, uh, the veterans just aren't really getting the job done right now. They're as a team, they're batting like 220 on the season. Their team slugging percentage is an extremely low 28th in the majors. They're only a slugging percentage of three 37. That's not going to get the job done. They've only scored 87 runs this year. This is just a, not a team that you can count on to score very many runs. They're going to need to put up something on the board going up against the New York Mets, who are 13 and 11 on the season. They come into this game fresh off of winning 8 to 2 in their last game of the series against the San Francisco Padres, but they lost that series two games to one, so they can't feel great about that. Handing the ball in this one to Jose Buto. He comes into this game 0 and 0 on the season with a 1.65 ERA. Very solid start for him, and we also see that the Mets are 3 and 0 in his starts. He just hasn't figured in any of the decisions. He hasn't gotten very good run support, which isn't too shocking. The Mets have definitely had their hitting woes this year for sure. First start of the season, six innings of one run ball against the Detroit Tigers. Second outing of the series, six innings of zero run ball against the Kansas City Royals. His last time out back on the 20th, he did get touched up by the Dodgers a little bit. He gave up two earned runs and four and a third. He really just struggled with his control in that game. It was terrible. He had five walks and six strikeouts in that game. So he definitely needs to uh, work on his command a little bit. But just in general, the Mets can't feel too bad about the start that he's gotten off to. And it seems like there's a chance this team's bats are coming back alive. They did look very, very good in their series against the Dodgers. They looked very good in their series against the Pirates. Things did cool off a little bit here against the Padres. They only scored two, one, and then eight runs in that series. So things are definitely like trending in a positive direction overall for this team. And they're coming off a good hitting day. So that has to feel nice. Their team on base percentage is very solid. It's top 10 in the majors, but their run scored and batting average while above average don't have them in the top 10 in the majors. But in general, this team scored 113 runs, 12th in the majors in terms of runs scored, not too shabby. Looking at the numbers for this game, we see the Mets are only minus 118 playing at home in this one against a Cardinals team that's plus 110 and has not been having a great time, guys. I think we're definitely going to lean towards taking the Mets minus 118 in this one. 
not a lot of great uh, looks here at the over under we do see the Cardinals are a huge under team but the numbers at seven and a half runs so I don't think we're going to be very interested in taking the under or anything like that and I don't expect enough offense in this one to take the over so go ahead and give me the New York Mets against the struggling Cardinals and their struggling starter I think they're going to find a way to get the win in this one Moving right along, guys, we've got the Cleveland Guardians going on the road to take on the Atlanta Braves in a clash between two of the best teams in the majors so far this season. The Guardians come into this one 18-7 on the year. They just won two out of three against the Boston Red Sox after sweeping the Oakland A's, so they have to feel pretty good about how things are looking right now. They're handing the ball in this one to Logan Allen. He comes into this game 3-0, but with a 5.06 ERA. His last time out, he looked decent against the A's. He gave up three earned runs and two home runs in that one over only five and a third. Not exactly the best look when you're going against an Oakland team that has been really, really bad hitting the ball this season. He hasn't really had elite start. I mean, he has one really good start, but it was against Seattle Mariners, another team that struggled hitting the ball. So I don't think we feel fantastic about him in this game, but the Guardians offense has looked very, very good this year. They're top 10 in pretty much every major statistical category. We've seen Stephen Kwan get off to an amazing start. Josh Naylor's off to a good start as well. Jose Ramirez is hitting the cover off the ball. All of them are a big part of the reason this team is eighth in the majors in uh, terms of team batting average. They're batting over 250 as a squad. They scored 128 runs this season, so in general, I think the Guardians feel pretty good with how their offense is looking, but how good do they really feel about handing the ball here to Logan Allen. The Braves come into this game. They're fresh off of a sweep of the Miami Marlins. They did win the last game of that series by only a single run, but they shut out the Marlins in the first two games of that series. So definitely some positives to find in that one. They're going to be handing the ball in this game to Chris Sale, who's rounding into form pretty nicely. His last time out, he did give up three runs to the Texas Rangers, but he went seven innings deep into that game. He had seven strikeouts and only a single walk, and we've pretty much just seen him get stronger here and go deeper and deeper into games over the course of the season. Two and one with a 4.38 ERA and 27 strikeouts. That's not bad. Obviously, we know Sale is capable of even better numbers, so maybe we're seeing him uh, trend in a positive direction here. The Braves offense, they are absolutely just destroying the ball right now. They're first in the majors in almost every major category. They're batting 283 as a squad. We've seen Marcel Ozuna get off to an absolutely insane start. The guy's batting nearly 350 and has nine home runs and 29 RBIs. Like, just absolutely killing it right now. Team on base percentage is well over 350. This is just an elite, elite offensive team. There's no way around it. We always expect them to put up some runs, no matter who they're going up against. Looking at the numbers for this game, we see the Braves are very big favorites. They're minus 198 in this one. The Guardians are plus 176. We see an over-under of 8.5, and, and both of these teams are big over teams. And guys, I know we're not on overs very often, but this might be a time to look at it. We don't really expect Logan Allen to have a great time in this one. And Chris Sale, while he's looked better as of late, has been giving up some runs. I mean, he gave up three runs and five runs respectively over his last two starts. So I think we're going to see some scoring in this game with both of these very solid offenses. Neither one of these starters really get me super crazy excited. So I don't know if this is going to end up in our pinned comment plays. I kind of tend to think it won't, but Give me a little bite here of over eight and a half. I think we're going to see a lot of offense, and I don't really have a great lean in this one on which team's going to come out on top. Next up on the docket, guys, we got the Tampa Bay Rays going on the road to take on the Chicago White Sox. The Rays come into this game. They're fresh off of a win against the Tigers. They won game three that series, seven to five, but they lost that series two games to one, and just in general, they can't be very happy with their 13 and 13 start. That's not what this team had in mind. They're hoping things can improve a little bit, handing the ball here to Zach Eflin. He's coming off of a pretty great, a pretty dominant start against the Yankees, albeit a Yankees team that's not hitting the ball great right now, but whatever. He'll definitely take it. Anytime you go six innings and you add absolutely shut out the opponent. That's pretty good. Six innings, three hits, six strikeouts. That's an elite start. And his start before that, he dominated the Los Angeles Angels. He went six and a third, gave up six hits in that one and had five strikeouts, no walks, no runs. Those are elite, elite performances. This guy deserves better than what the Tampa Bay offense has been giving him, and it hasn't been a lot. This offense is pretty much bottom third of the majors in most of the major categories. I mean, we've seen Ahmad Rosario get off to a pretty good start. We've seen Isaac Paredes get off to a good start, but this team just hasn't been scoring enough runs. They're 19th in runs scored with 103, and that's not exactly going to get the job done. They're 22nd in slugging percentage in the majors. They're 25th in the majors in on-base percentage. That's a number you really got to work on guys if you're trying to score some runs. They're hoping they can get things going or maybe uh, keep things pointing in the right direction here going up against the worst team in the major leagues, the Chicago White Sox, who are only 3-22 and on the season. They come into this game fresh off of getting swept in a four-game series against the Minnesota Twins, 
And before that, they got swept in a three-game series against the Phillies, so they're currently riding a seven-game losing streak. This team has not looked good. They're handing the ball on this one to Chris Flexen, who has not had a good time starting this season off. He's 0-3 with a 6.41 ERA, so not exactly great. His last two outings weren't even starts. He was coming out of the bullpen. He looked pretty serviceable out of the pen. I'm not going to lie, guys. His last time out... Two, inning, two and a third innings pitch. He did give up an earned run in that one. He gave up a home run. But before that, he was lights out in four innings of work against the Phillies, only giving up a single hit over those four innings, having four strikeouts. So some positives to look at for him there for sure. But how deep do we really trust him to go into a, the game here? And just in general, how much do the White Sox trust him? I mean, for a pretty bad team to be moving you back into the bullpen, that's not exactly a huge uh, show of faith right now. So looking at the uh, White Sox offense, that's been pretty freaking abysmal, guys. They've been for sure the worst offensive team in the majors. It's not really even that close. Their team batting average is all the way down to 189. Their team slugging percentage is last in the majors in 292. They're last in every major hitting category, guys. There's no positives to report out here. This team absolutely cannot hit the ball. They have scored three, three, and five runs over their last three games, which is pretty impressive for them. But the game before that, they got shut out. So we're not exactly going to freak out and think this offense is suddenly getting back on track things are not looking good offensively for this team and that's the reason they are such massive underdogs in this game we see the rays are minus 225 in this game the white Sox are plus 205 and the over under in this one is at seven and a half which is pretty uh pretty big indictment of how these two offenses are looking right now especially with Flexen on the mound who's not exactly a monster guys ah, this seems pretty tough i mean do we really want to look at taking the tampa bay rays to minus one and a half they're only minus 130 if you even take that line which doesn't look appealing to me given that the rays are only 10 and 16 against the run line this season the white Sox aren't good don't get me wrong they're 9 and 16 against the run line but i'm not taking the over under on a seven and a half guys just give me the tampa bay rays minus 225 obviously that's not a great price but there's no reason to think the white Sox are going to win any games anytime just in general this season so give me tampa bay to win they need these wins desperately but that minus 225 is a pretty steep price Next up, guys, we got the Cincinnati Reds going on the road to take on the Texas Rangers. The Reds come into this game fresh off of a loss, a five to nothing loss to the Phillies, but they won. They split that series two games to two, so they can't feel too bad about that. They're 14 and 11 on the season. They're a little bit back now of the Cubs and the Brewers, who are sitting atop the NL Central. But in general, the Reds can't feel, I guess, absolutely terrible about their start to the season. 14 and 11, though, probably not what they had in mind. They're handing the ball in this game to Graham Ashcraft. They have to feel decent about his record, which is 3-1, but not so good about his ERA, which is still at 5.24, thanks in large part to his start against the Angels his last time out, where he gave up five earned runs over five innings, and his start against the Milwaukee Brewers, where he got absolutely shelled for five earned runs over five and two-thirds. So things haven't looked amazing for him this season in general. He did have a very good start against the White Sox, but that's not super impressive, and he got knocked around a little bit by the Phillies. So the guy's gotten pretty lucky in terms of run support, and that can happen happen for sure when you're pitching for the Cincinnati Reds. The Reds come into this game. They're eighth in terms of run scored in the majors so far, so they have to feel pretty good about that. We've seen Ellie De La Cruz get off to a fantastic start. Spencer Steer is also off to a pretty good start, but their team batting average is pretty low, guys. Their team on base percentage isn't exactly elite, so those are all signs that we might see this offense be in for a little bit of regression here. They're taking on the Rangers in this game, who come into this one fresh off of losing a three-game series to the Seattle Mariners. They lost that series two games is one so that can't really feel great and the rangers are down to being 13 and 13 on the season they're handing the game ball in this one nathan eovaldi he comes in this game one and two with a 3.30 era so pretty reasonable numbers in this one but he's having a little bit of a hard time lately he got shelled by the houston astros back on the 14th and then his last time out he gave up three earned runs on five hits and he had six walks against the atlanta Braves. so a little bit of control problems there he hasn't had a ton of control problems this season so it's a little concerning to see that crop up but he's gonna need to pitch pretty well given where the texas rangers offense has been at here just over the last couple of games they scored zero runs against the mariners and three runs in two of those games i guess a total of 12 runs over three games isn't terrible for their series against the mariners but it's not exactly hitting the cover off the ball and this team is still has pretty solid hitting numbers across the board i mean that's a lot of from a relatively solid early start but 10th in the majors in terms of run scored, 9th in the majors in team batting average, 10th in the majors in on-base percentage. This is a team that's hoping they can round in a form down the stretch, but I don't know, guys. It seems like kind of a big ask, and we also don't know if Seager's going to be in this game. He's got a 
injured shin right now after getting hit by a pitch so that would not be great news for them looking at the numbers for this game we see the rangers are pretty sizable favorites at minus 162 which kind of makes sense given where the red starter has been so far this season but he's been lucky he's been getting that run support for sure so the reds plus 142 might be a little bit appealing I don't really know about the Rangers minus 162. I don't really think that's the, the right price for this game. I don't think I'm that high on the Rangers right now. Looking at the over under for this game, we see it's at eight and a half. We see the Reds are 14, 10 and one to the over and Texas is slightly an under trending team. So I don't really know which way to go on the over under. I don't really trust either starter, but I also don't trust the Reds to put up a ton of runs playing away from home and the Rangers offense has been slumping a little bit, but maybe this is like a get right spot for them. So I guess give me a little taste of the Reds plus 142. We'll see if Ashcraft can keep uh, riding his like hot run support streak. But in terms of the over under, I don't really know. And this is not a game that I have a ton of confidence in. Next up guys, we're looking at the New York Yankees going on the road to take on the Milwaukee Brewers. The Yankees come into this game fresh off of a pretty embarrassing loss to the Oakland A's. They split that series two games to two. That's not what you're supposed to be doing against teams like the the Oakland A's. The Yankees do come into this game 17 and 9 on the season. They're going to be handing the ball in this one to Luis Gill. He's gotten off to a pretty decent start. He's 1 and 1 with a 2.75 ERA. And his last time out, he dominated the Tampa Bay Rays. He only gave up a single run. It wasn't even an earned run in five and two thirds innings. He had nine strikeouts and three walks. His control has been a concern this season for sure. He's walked three, seven, four, and three batters. So at least three batters in each of his starts. And since he's not going super deep into games, that means he's average averaging close to a walk per inning, which is obviously not ideal. You can't be putting guys out there on base for free, especially when you've got the New York Yankees offense behind you, which even though it's loaded with superstars, not really uh, getting me too excited. We've seen Aaron Judge get off to a terrible start. Juan Soto's really been carrying the load here, but in general, this Yankees team, not supposed to be a squad that is uh, sitting at 14th in the majors in terms of runs scored and 18th in terms of slugging percentage. They're just not hitting the ball as well as they were supposed to, and they're gonna need to hit the ball pretty well here against the Milwaukee Brewers, who come into this game 16 and eight on the season and fresh off of winning two in a row to split their series against the Pirates two games to two. We see the Brewers are handing the ball in this one to Colin Ray, he comes into this game, stellar start from him. He's 2-0 with a 2.08 ERA. He's coming off a dominant performance against the Cardinals. Maybe not quite dominant. I mean, five hits and in five innings, maybe not domination, but he gave up zero runs in that game. He had three strikeouts and three walks, so maybe not his, the most locked in he's ever been, and he hasn't pay, faced a ton of stellar hitting. I mean, against the Orioles, probably the best hitting team that he's faced this season. He did give up three earned runs in five and two-thirds, so I don't know which way to lean in that one, but the Yankees obviously have not been hitting the ball that well. The Brewers, on the other hand, come into this game hitting the cover off the ball. They're ninth in the majors in terms of run scored. They're fourth batting 262, so fourth in the majors in batting average third in the majors and on-base percentage, and fourth in slugging percentage. So this team hitting the ball extremely well. We've seen William Contreras get off to a blistering start, and he isn't slowing down right now. He's batting 365 with five home runs and 22 RBIs. So the guy is absolutely killing it out there. And if we look at the numbers for this game, we see the Brewers are plus 108 playing at home against the Yankees team that's struggling to score runs and struggling to win games against teams like the Oakland A's. Guys, this might seem a little bit tough. I know the Yankees are sometimes a scary team to bet against, but we're taking the Milwaukee Brewers plus 108 in this one. I think this is a very good spot. I don't have a huge lean here on the over under. The Yankees are a massive under team. So if you wanted to take a taste of the under, just based on the fact the Yankees aren't hitting the ball, I guess you could do that. But we are going to be on the Brewers plus 108 in this one. I think they've got a fantastic chance to win this game. Looking at the next game we've got on the docket, guys, we got the Minnesota Twins going on the road to take on the Los Angeles Angels. The Twins come into this game winners of four in a row. They swept the Chicago White Sox in that four game series. So sweeping the White Sox, not exactly a huge accomplishment. And that only has gotten the Twins to 11 and 13 on the year. Not exactly having the best time here in the early goings. They're handing the ball in this one to Bailey Ober. He comes into this game one and one with a 4.91 ERA, but he is in fresh off of a very good start. A couple very good starts actually against the Detroit Tigers, but great starts against the Tigers isn't exactly a huge accomplishment not a team that hits the ball extremely well he does have a good start this season however against the LA Dodgers so his last three starts have been very very good they've all been bounce backs from his 
terrible outing to start the season against the Kansas City Royals, where he gave up nine hits and eight earned runs over only one and a third innings. So his numbers should actually be a lot better than they look right now if he had just kind of held things together there against the Royals. But back-to-back -back dominant starts, even if it's against the Tigers, definitely means something. The Twins' offense has not looked good here out of the gate at all. They've done kind of decent in their series against the Chicago White Sox. I mean, I guess they're averaging more than six runs a game in that series against the White Sox. So hooray, you did great against the White Sox. We're not throwing you a parade, though. 86 runs this season overall, not very good. 27th in the majors, and they're in clearly the bottom third, if not worse, of the majors in all the major statistics in terms of hitting. So we're not feeling great about their offense. They're going to have to find a way to score some runs going up against the Los Angeles Angels, who come into this game. They are suddenly having a very hard time, guys. They're down all the way to 10 and 15 on the season. They only managed to win a single game out of their last two series. They got swept by the Reds and then won one of three against the Orioles. So not fantastic looking right now. They're handing the ball in this one to Patrick Sandoval. He comes into this game one and three on the season with a six. 6.75 ERA, so not exactly what you'd be hoping for. His last time out against the Cincinnati Reds, it was a game at the Great American Ballpark, not the easiest place to pitch, but giving up seven earned runs in four innings, that's not a great look. His start before that against the Rays looked pretty good, but his start before that against the Rays again looked pretty bad, so not a lot of consistency and not a lot of success here for Patrick Sandoval. The Angels' offense in general has looked kind of middle of the road, which I guess isn't terrible considering where the Angels are usually at in the majors. Mike Trout's hit 10 home runs here in the early going, but his batting average isn't looking so hot. Taylor Ward is off to a good start. He's got 23 RBIs, seven home runs, and is batting 277. But as a team, just not producing a lot of offense. I mean, they did score five, seven, and two runs in their series against the Orioles, so maybe their offense is getting a little bit better. But I don't know how good we feel with them going up against Bailey Ober, who has looked pretty good, especially against middle-of-the-road hitting teams. So looking at the odds for this game, it makes sense that things are pretty, pretty close. We see the Twins minus 104, the Angels minus 102. Tough to find a lean in this game. I mean, we do see that uh, yeah, no major real uh, trends to look at in terms of the over-under, which is currently sitting at 8.5. Do we think both of these teams are going to struggle to hit the ball? I don't really think so. Do we see the Twins likely to come away with the win in this one playing on the road? I mean, Ober has looked good, and the Twins' offense has looked a little bit better, but they're going to be facing a whole different caliber of team here in the Angels. But the Angels have been slumping. I don't know, guys. This is a pretty tough spot for me. If you're forcing me to bet this game, I guess go ahead and give me the Twins. I just don't have any trust here in Patrick Sandoval. But this is not going to be a game we're going to be betting ourselves. Last but not least, guys, we're looking at the Philadelphia Phillies going on the road to take on the San Diego Padres. The Phillies come into this game 16-10 and 10 on the season overall. They just split a two-game series with the Cincinnati Reds, so not exactly the result they were looking for, but also not terrible playing at the Great American Ballpark. Things can get a little bit weird. They're handing the ball on this one to Aaron Nola. They've got to feel great about that. He is 3-1 with a 3.16 ERA, so pretty solid. They've won in each of his last four starts. He's coming off an eight-inning outing against the Chicago White Sox, so we're going to discount that a little bit since it was against the White Sox, but still a very solid outing, and he struck out seven in that one. He struck out nine in the outing before that, but we're going to discount it a little bit also because it was against the Colorado Rockies. Neither one of those teams are very good. He also looked pretty decent against the Cardinals. The guy just hasn't faced a lot of elite hitting this season. In his first start of the year, he went up against the Atlanta Braves and got absolutely shelled, but that's his first start of the year, so we're willing to give him a little bit of a pass on that one. In terms of offense, we've seen the Phillies look pretty middle of the road this season. I mean, maybe things are turning on a little bit. They did just score five runs against the Reds in their last game of that series, but they did have a couple of like kind of question marky type games, so we'll see what we actually get. It's good to see Bryce Harper back out there hitting a home run in his last game. I guess he's a little bit invigorated from just having a kid, so good for him. Kyle Schwarber's hitting some home runs but batting under 200, so kind of uh, what you'd expect from him. Trey Turner's batting 336 to lead the team in batting average. So I think we can feel semi-confident, at least in the Phillies offense, and they're going to need to score some runs going up against San Diego Padres. Although the Padres haven't gotten off to probably the start they imagined. They're only 14 and 14 on the season. They just split a four-game series against the lowly Colorado Rockies. That's not what you're looking to do. You want to be winning those series against those bad teams. They're going to be handing the ball in this game to Joe Musgrove, who's gotten off to kind of a middle-of-the-road start. He's 3-2 and two with a 5.74 ERA. His last time out kind of looked how you would expect him to look against the Toronto Blue Jays. He went seven innings, gave up three runs on five hits, gave up two home runs in that outing, and the home run ball has definitely been a problem for him. He's given up at least one home run in three 
four of his five starts this season. His only game where he didn't give up a home run was to the St. Louis Cardinals, who are one of the worst hitting teams in baseball, it feels like right now. So just in general, we worry about him giving up the long ball a little bit. And he hasn't exactly been facing a murderer's row of hitters. I mean, he did not do very good against the Brewers or against the Chicago Cubs, so we definitely expect him to have a little bit of trouble here against the Phillies. Not a spot that we love here for Musgrove. The Phillies' offense in general has been pretty good over the course of the season. Not going to get like me to say much bad about them. Jackson Merrill's off to a good start. Fernando Tatis is hitting the ball pretty well here in the early goings. 130 runs, tied for fifth in the majors. 256 team batting average, that's good for seventh in the majors. So I think we can expect this team to definitely find a way to put up some runs. Look at the numbers for this game. We see the Phillies are minus 115. I guess that is mostly uh, Aaron Nola respect in this game. We see it over under at seven and a half. So they're definitely expecting both starting pitchers to look fairly decent. In a game where we see bull starters look pretty decent, guys, I'm definitely leaning towards the Phillies. Despite the fact they're playing on the road in this one, give me the Phillies minus 115. That's all the games we have for today, guys. Hit the like button for good luck on all your bets and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Let me know in the comments any questions you have on today's slate. Thanks for watching. You can click the link in the description to check out stumpthespread.com, and we will see you guys tomorrow for more sports betting action.